Welcome to Type 9 SQL Data Refresh. This video is going to concentrate on some of the more advanced features. First thing we're going to talk about is projects. If you're finding yourself refreshing the same databases over and over again, what you can do is you can create projects. So you can create a new project and you can save the source database, the destination database, you can save the tables that you select. So you can make a project that's the partial billing refresh, the full billing refresh, the uh, a refresh for this project, refresh for that project, software projects I'm talking about. The projects will store the tables and some of the other other things such as post refresh SQL scripts. One of the things you can do is after a refresh is completed, you can have it execute a piece of SQL. There's a, a simple SQL editor built into the tool, and you can put in a piece of SQL. We have a, a simple example here, and then there's a verify button that'll like run it against the database to see if there's any problems. It doesn't actually ex it it, do it doesn't like a no execute on it, but it'll do a syntax check. On it. So you can do whatever special things that you need to do, especially if you're getting data from like your production database and getting it to your development database to deproductionize that data. Maybe you have some links to production servers, maybe you have uh, some very specialized settings, uh, some maybe maybe you have some uh, links to web services, uh, you know, production web services. You want to change those to development web services. You can do that all here through the SQL editor and then just tell it to execute that at the end. There's also a post email notification. What you can do is you can type in a, a subject and um, we'll just put refresh uh, completed and then you can add email addresses and there's a, a simple editor here to add email addresses. You can add a bunch of email addresses or uh, email addresses to groups and you can just uh, jp at uh, gmail.com. We'll just add one as an example. We'll add another one. ht at uh, gmail.com. We'll add another one real quick. And just to give you an idea, the, the idea is after a refresh, it will send the email off to that team. That email list is stored in the project. So if you create a project, that is for a specific database, then you could pick a group of people responsible in that area and then send them an email at the end. There is, um, in the options, there is also uh, some things like save, <coughs> save the current email notification as the default one store the login credentials in the projects if you have a if you have a, um, a database that you have to put in a sql login and password you can store that in the project or you could not store it in there you can specify what you want you can tell it to analyze the project to analyze the databases automatically after loading the project or you, or you can optionally not you can enable refresh protection refresh protection is is just a little added safety what what you can do is you can have a list of the servers and databases that you don't want to accidentally overwrite and if you put one of those databases as your target by accident it won't let you do it uh, if you don't enable it of course you can overwrite if you accidentally reverse uh, development and production, you can, any of the proper credentials, you could probably overwrite production. Good, good practice, you should probably not have uh, full control of your production, uh, a login with full control for your production database as the login you're using to do your refreshes if you're moving production to uh, 
your development environment. It's probably better to move the data from production to a staging database. You can do a backup and restore to a sta uh, staging database and then do all the refreshes from that staging database. That would be a lot safer and, and, and more convenient for a, a bunch of reasons. You would be putting locks on your database and, and, and things like that. But uh, you may not have space for it and you may not be doing it frequently enough. It, it all depends on your own personal preferences and environment. Uh, the cache databases, I'm sorry, cache database names is entered. As you enter in uh, database names, as you uh, 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 query them and add them, if you want to reuse them over and over easily, you can cache them. So they'll grow a, a list of previously used databases will just grow, grow, grow as you use the tool. On the general tab, there is an option to continue refresh if errors. You can turn this on and off too. If, if there's an error for some reason, if, if it's an able to refresh the data in a table through some type of um, conversion or some type of an issue, you may want to stop. May, maybe not. Maybe just continue and get all the other data. Typically, this is for development databases. So if you have a a low glitch, maybe 99% of the data is better than none of it. The change recovery mode to simple during a refresh helps with uh, your log management and things like that. Send an email notification on completion. Optionally, it'll send or not send an email notification. Execute the SQL script on completion. Again, you can optionally turn that on and off. Adjust referential integrity rows. If you're moving it from a, a live database, moving, refreshing data from a live database where rows are being added to it, you may have a, a situation where you have some children records and not the parent records. And the, this adjustment will take care of that. It takes a little bit longer for the refresh. If you care about that, if you want a, a more referential integrity uh, slice of your refresh, you want to turn this on. It slows down the, the refresh a little bit. And optionally, you can turn it on and off. And again, it's intended for getting data to QA for testing and data into development for development. And in most cases, you don't have to have every single record. This was a customer order database. You probably don't need every single order up to that second. Um, use no lock hint on source database. If you put that on, it does dirty reads, and dirty reads would probably be fine. The same same scenario. You're going to get the data is not going to be exactly 100% in your development database, but it's probably close enough. Um, enabled data depersonalization will depersonalize the data based on the depersonalization rules. There's another video in the collection that talks about that topic in more depth. Um, the SMTV setup. This one is if you're going to be sending emails, we need to know some basic information, who the email is from, your SMTP server, port number, the authentication, uh, the type of authentication. You set that up one time and then it can take care of that. And let's see what else there is. If you go into uh, right mouse click into here, we can export the contents to uh, Excel. If you want to email this to a colleague or team, show them what got refreshed or maybe just export this and ask them what tables do you need refreshed so you can just give them fresh data for the tables that they need you can uh, select no tables manually select individually the tables you want or you can say select all the tables you can uh, perform the table on now re-perform the table analysis from here too so now it is re-querying both 
the source and the target and analyzing them to see if there's any differences. Um, maybe you uh, maybe you realize that the changes weren't in, in QA when you when you did the first analysis and now you want it up to date. You can apply those changes and, and just re-query it. Uh, see what else there is. You can filter tables. You can go into here and you can put a filter in here. And you can say, I just want the person tables. And applying that filter will just focus it on the, uh, the criteria that you put in. You can uh, also you know, take that filter off and put it back to all the tables. The trace log is for debugging. So you can, uh, if you have some issue where there is a, a problem with the tool, you can enable the uh, trace log, perform your refresh, and then you could view the trace log to see what the uh, what the problem is. You can see the error message. This one it doesn't have the the situation, but if there is an error in the status, it will say there is an error with it. If you right mouse click on it, there'll be a menu item to show the, the details of the error, and you'll be able to view that, and that'll give you some idea of. The, the situation that's preventing that refresh to happen. Well, that's about it for the, uh, the more advanced features. I hope you enjoy this video. I hope you enjoy this tool. I hope it makes your life easier. And if you have any questions, please go to www.titan9.com for more information. Thank you very much.